Hey guys, this is the final video on the qualitative analysis and you can strike it off the checklist. Because in this video, I'm going to cover five main types of reactions that can be tested for qualitative analysis, okay? And in the event that during the exam, you forget all the equations and the complicated stuff to remember, this is the video that you guys need to remember, alright? I have five reactions right now. Oxidizing and reducing agents, redox, ligand exchange, acid base, and disproportion agent. And these are the five things that Cambridge loves to test. So let's jump right in to the first one right here. By the way, all the whiteboard photos and timestamps are in the description. So you guys can check it out, right? So first, we are going to go to oxidizing and reducing agents. Okay, so this means oxidizing and this means reducing, okay? At least in what A level exams tell you. Okay, let's recall together what are the oxidizing and reducing agents that are commonly tested, be it theory or practical. So, KMNO4, correct? This is like an immediate thing that comes out in your mind. If not, what are some other ones? H2O2. Exactly, H2O2 is actually both an oxidizing and reducing agent. So, we look at it. For any oxidizing or reducing agents to function, correct? You need one important thing, which is the medium. Exactly. And what do I mean by medium? You need acidic or basic. How can you make something acidic? How can you make it become like a lemon? You add H plus. Basic or H minus. This is super basic. First, we look at one example. Chromium 3 plus. Now, what is chromium 3 plus and how does chromium 3 plus become oxidized? You know that transition metals, correct? From your theory, you know transition metal ions have variable oxidation states. And for this one, it can go all the way to plus 6. First of all, you need to know the medium. which minus and H2O2, okay? This is what they give you during the exams. You add these two together, this then will become an oxidizing agent. So you have, first, they ask you to add NaOH equals. Okay? And you guys are really smart, so you probably know when you add NaOH equals to this, in excess you form 3 minus, correct? How did I figure out this formula? Do look at the second part of the video that I made right before this one, okay? Now, when this becomes oxidized, this is in the plus 3 oxidation state, correct guys? Now, when this oxidizes, what occurs? You have to form a plus 6 oxidation state. So, it gets oxidized to form this thing called CrO4 2 minus. So, I know the formula itself is hard to remember, but during the exam, please be able to identify the medium as well as the oxidizing agent. Another example, we should take a look at an anion, SO3 to minus. Now, for SO3 to minus, right, what is oxidation state of sulfur? This is a question you should always ask. What is oxidation state? This oxidation state of it is, do the calculations, you get plus 4, am I right? And you know that sulfur, correct? has how many valence electrons? How many? Six, correct? Because it's in group 16, correct? So it can lose up to six electrons. And if it is greater than six electrons, correct? There'll be a much, much more energy that's required to remove the seventh electron. So you can only remove six. And a mass oxygen state, because of that, is still plus six. That's a very simple application of theory. So this one, will become oxidized okay so we'll choose a medium let's say we choose H plus and they give you KMNO4 and we mix these two together and then this will be oxidized correct to SO4 2 minus correct this is like the only other S sulfur compound that you guys may know and this one doesn't require heat because H plus itself produces a favorable medium for this become an oxidizing agent. However, for H2O2, right, it needs to have this condition called boil. And what is boiling, you guys know, is just it needs heat. Okay, just take note of this, take note of this concept as we proceed to the second one. Now, 
a second type of reaction is called redox. Redox reactions. And itself, right, the name itself splits it into reduction and oxidation, which you guys totally nailed it. And in this type of reaction, right, there are two important things you need to take note. The observation for this one and observation for this one. Okay, what do I mean by this? There are two observations you should take note of. A great example right here, I'll show you. You have Cl2 plus containing solution. Of course, during the exam, you don't know what ion it contains, but they give you the reagent that you're going to add. Ki equals, which is the source of I minus ions. You guys really know this. Now, Cl2 plus, let's think of the color of Cl2 plus blue, which is the color of this marker, right? This is easy. I minus I minus doesn't have a color, so it's just. Colorless. Now, this and this react. The natural tendency, right, which is very easy to identify, the natural tendency is you look at I minus, you know, you look at Cu2 plus I minus, there has to be some redox reaction. You have to expect something, and you're expecting I2 aqueous, correct? Whether you've studied this in theory or not, but you expect. I minus, what else could it form? Could it form iodine as a solid? That's really, really rare. And it so has to be I2 aqueous. It's kind of like elimination actually. So when these two things react, correct? What do you think will happen? These things, to form I2 aqueous, gets oxidized, correct? Minus one oxidation state, this is, yeah, zero, like an omelet. Now this one, if this is oxidized, this should be reduced. Now the actual tendency that you guys have is, it will become copper solid or will it become copper plus equals or will it become like copper minus or some weird thing minus no because it's a metal it wouldn't form any minus charge copper solid this is really interesting because what's happening is okay and this is totally unfavorable metals right tend to lose electrons. You guys studied this in all levels, okay? I don't need to explain that. So this equilibrium, right, so-called equilibrium, will be very, very much to the left. So this thing is not favored, okay? And it's super weird to see copper suddenly forming, the metal itself forming. So, so it forms copper plus. Now, copper plus, I minus, this will react. Okay, so the product, right, copper will have a plus one oxidation state. Now, so let's look at this. When this and this react, so there is I2 in the product. The second one is not copper, copper, iodide. This is plus one, this is minus one, this is zero. They just cancel, right? Now, as I mentioned here, two observations you guys need to note. If you just say, Oh, this, you look at this thing and you see this weird like ice cream kind of color which is called cream PPT, observed. This is just like half of the entire road. What is the other half then? I told you, I2 is being produced. From colorless, it's becoming sort of yellowish brown. Alright guys, I hope you guys know that. So you should say cream PPT. Okay, this is the other half in brown solution. Exactly. And that's simple. Okay? And under the same category of redox, right, there's another type of reaction, which is a subset. Displacement reactions. Okay? Not the physics displacement. Use fun math symbol redox. It's a subset. It's a subset, I'm sorry. It's a subset. And what I mean by that? Let's look at a great example. Now, you have a solution containing I minus equals. And then they ask you to add chlorine. Okay? If you guys actually studied this under the topic of electrochemistry, you know that this string is a stronger oxidizing agent. It's back to the first type of reaction that I highlighted. This it's a strong oxidizing agent. So this would oxidize this, which would form C L minus. Correct? Because this
this thing is getting reduced and this thing gets oxidized to form I2 aqueous. So this one would be very yellowish and it's very hard to distinguish between these two colors. So immediately they will ask you to either put starch or they ask you to add hexane. And this is back to organic can. Hexane is an organic solvent. Since I2 aqueous, right, is a simple molecular structure, it can only form ID-ID interactions. Thus, it is able to dissolve in hexane more than it does in water. So you'll be able to see a clear, what color? Purple, okay? So please note, displacement is a subset of redox, and this example, as well as the main redox reaction, two observations to take note of. Guys, got it? Now we look at a third reaction type right now. Now the third reaction type I'm going to highlight to you is ligand exchange. And where do you see this ligand exchange? In theory, right? I mean, your notes, correct? We studied this under the topic of transition metals. Am I right? The first thing you need to note is there is no oxidation and no reduction because this is not really a redox reaction the question you guys may have right is how do you know this is a ligand exchange reaction the exam you're already in a panic so how do you identify it? i'll give you three simple guidelines okay the first one is something that i really hinted at you at the start of this part of the video which is tm so if they test you on a tm ion or you suspect that in the test tube there is a transition metal ion, then probably is something with ligand exchange. You gotta do in there, okay? The second one is to race it through an example. I hope you guys can highlight to me what is the keyword. Let's see, two plus. I have NACL in excess. Okay, so this was actually from my prelims. I actually got it wrong. I admit that, but I'll tell you guys what was the thing that I did not know, that I want you guys to know. They had NACL in excess. There was this weird, like, greenish, yellowish thing happening, which I thought, unfortunately, was Cl2 aqueous, which is a big no-no. The actual thing that formed was CuCl4 2 minus. See, this is plus 2 still. So why is the keyword that I want to highlight to you? Excess. And what I mean by excess means that this thing, the concentration of chlorine ions, is freaking high. And during your school notes, right, you probably studied CO2 plus with concentrated keyword HCl will give you this ion ratio. So the next keyword, how to identify this, is concentrated or adding some kind of solid in excess. Got it? The third way, which is a bit harder, requires a lot more theory, okay? It's stronger ligand. What's a stronger ligand? Let's compare these two things. SCN versus H2O. So what KSCN will do, right? Will displace the H2O from the reaction involving Fe3+. So Fe3+, right, exists as Fe2O6 3+. This thing will displace this thing to form Fe right here, Fe SCN 5 H2O 3+. I told you the charge would have changed because there's no oxidation and reduction. If I'm not wrong, why is this a stronger ligand? It's because O, right, is more electronegative than sulfur. Sulfur is less electronegative, so it will give its lone pair because that S is the one that is, the lone pair of S is the one that's involved in the S ligand, okay? So again, there's no oxidation and reduction, and these are the three ways to identify when is this a ligand exchange reaction? Alright, let's proceed to the fourth type of reaction. For the fourth type of reaction,
injection, okay? Which is acid base. How do we test you? One way is junction test, and people generally don't identify it immediately. How do you do it? They first have either H plus and OH minus. Either you add OH minus first in the form of NaOH, and then you add H2SO4. Have you seen these kind of things happening during a QA? This is basically called like a junction test. If I'm not wrong, it's called a junction test. And what happens is, let me give you an example. L3 plus. If you add in excess, it will form ALOH4 minus. And then immediately, right, they ask you to add H plus. What does H plus do? H plus would shift the equilibrium. The main concept over here is to shift an equilibrium. Okay? It's thin from revert back to AL3. How does this occur? This thing reacts with H plus first to form ALOH3. Balance the equation. And then with further H plus, right? It forms AL3 plus equals, which is actually in your school notes. I don't want to go too deep into it because I want to cover the second way, the second type how they can test you is you add NH3, then NH4 CL. Now, where does this occur? Reactions that involve Mg2 plus and Mn2 plus. Why? When you look at this thing, right, the immediate equation that comes to your mind is NH3 plus H2O. H4 plus no H minus and this is a equilibrium reaction correct so and back to the point on the shift in equilibrium this is a thing that comes a lot from practice in your theory papers so when you add NH3 right both these compounds will form XOH2 whichever the ion is now when you add NH4Cl what happens the equilibrium of this Reaction, right? Should label as two shifts left. This is by Lee Chatelier's principle. So when this shifts left, concentration of OH minus falls. That's very bad, correct? When this falls, this equation, right? Because how does this form? You add OH minus, correct? Two units of OH minus to form this. OH minus decreases. Equilibrium of this shift back. So it will form back your individual ions in individual colors, all right? So this is the fourth type of reaction. I would like you guys to emphasize this point, shift in equilibrium, just reverting back the effects of what the first reaction did. Simple, okay? Now, this is the rarest type of reaction, disproportionation. It has occurred in my prelims as well. But I'll give you an example of how they can test your disproportionation reaction. Cl minus with NaClO. You see what they ask you to do, right? Is to add NaClO. This is a source of ClO minus ions, which is a really weird, comp weird ion right here, in the presence of H plus. Or you just leave it as H plus or HCl or H2SO4. Now, when this reacts with this, right, what is the oxidation state of chlorine? Minus 1. Oxidation state of this, this is plus 1, right? Plus 1, minus 2, minus 1, okay? So naturally, when these minus 1 and plus 1 combine, right, they're like opposite things, they collide, they will just form a middle of each other, like a compromise. So minus 1 plus 1 becomes a zero state. And in this case, some chlorine in a zero oxidation state is called chlorine. Equals. Simple, right? I guess when you want to find whether it's a disproportionation reaction, it's really good practice, okay, to check oxidation states. And check the oxidation states of the direct ion that's been involved in the change of oxidation. In this case, it's chlorine. Why is this disproportionation? This thing gets reduced, okay, I'll just say this, and this thing gets 
oxidized and it involves the same ion okay it's like two things that are forming the same compound so this chlorine is being oxidized and reduced at the same time which is the definition of this proportionation so guys the main takeaways of these videos do know these types of reactions in case you panic during your exams look at approaches that are highlighted to you and hope you guys found this video helpful for you please share this video with your friends do subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for my next video thanks for watching